Your purpose, your worth, your confidence is not found in a guy liking you. It's not found in that sweet romance. It's not found in the marriage status. Yay! Oh, probably just get back and very close. Guys, hi! <laughs> I'm so thankful that you have tuned in to my YouTube channel. My name is Emma Mae McDaniel and I love you so deeply. I'm so excited because we are talking about singleness today and I really hope that this video brings you so much encouragement and I hope that it not only encourages you specifically in the topic of singleness, but I also just really hope that it ultimately it ultimately points you to the Lord and it encourages you to draw near to God for he will draw near to you, realizing what's most important. So I'm so, so glad that y'all are here. Um, a question that, or I guess a couple questions that I wanna start off with in this video is kind of deep, but they're very foundational and so important for us to know what the answer is to them. And that is, where do you believe your confidence is found? Where do you believe your worth is found? Where do you believe your purpose lies? Because how you answer these questions is going to overflow into how you answer a lot of other questions, into how you navigate life, into how you navigate relationships. It's, they're, they're essential fundamental questions. And I think the reason that I start our time together off with those questions is because I, I think that in our day and age in especially in this culture, we have put dating, engagement, and marriage on this special pedestal. And we view them as though like, when I get there, I've made it. When I get there, my worth increases. When I get there, my purpose becomes more significant. When I get there, like my confidence, it's, it's gonna maximize. Like it's gonna just be, out of this world type of confidence. And we hype up those different relationship statuses and those different seasons in such a way that I really believe it causes us to downplay singleness and see it as a time that we have to endure through. Like, I just gotta get through it. I'm, I'm in a waiting season, which is, I'm not, saying that that is not a waiting season because there are times where we are believing the Lord for something and we are we are waiting and we are trusting and there are times where it is hard and we are enduring and we are not necessarily in a season where we wish we were in in the moment and so like those feelings of difficulty as you navigate a season you may not in the moment want to be in that's so real. But the way that we view singleness is like, I just got to get through it. It's an enduring season. I'm currently waiting. This isn't where it's at, but marriage is where it's at. And if I can just wait a little longer to get there, then I can live out my purpose more. Then I can be more confident. Then I know that I am loved because a guy saw me and wanted to do life with me. And I really don't believe that that mentality, that that view is healthy. I don't believe it's best. I don't believe that it is of God's heart. And I wanna encourage you too, that the desire to be in a relationship, the desire to be married, it's not bad. So don't beat yourself up. Don't be hard on yourself for having that desire to, to wanting that and dreaming of that happening one day and praying over your future spouse. Like the, that desire is, is valid. It is sweet. Marriage is a gift. Marriage literally, like it is, it is designed by God to reflect his relationship with his people. Like we read in Ephesians 5, submit yourselves to, let me just read it to y'all. It's so good. Like literally, marriage is for the purpose of, of bringing glory to God and reflecting his relationship with us. It, it, it's insane. Ephesians 5, starting in verse 21, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit yourself to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. 
For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. You see how everything in marriage is resembling the bride's relationship with Christ? So good. Um, I'll start back in verse 23. I just got excited. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church. Again, we see the reflection of God and the bride. He loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blem blemish, but holy and blameless. In the same way, again, we see that reflection, its purpose. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. And it continues to go on after. I'm literally just going to read it because it's so good. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, referring back to Genesis and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. Marriage is a gift from God. It is designed to reflect his glory, to show his love for the bride, to show how the bride submits herself to Christ as Lord. It is stunning. It's so beautiful. And your desire for, like ladies, your desire for a husband, guys, your desire for a wife, it is legitimate. It is, it is a beautiful desire. So I just wanna encourage you in that. And also I wanna encourage you to take that desire to the Lord. Talk about that desire with the Lord instead of just thinking on all of the, like, if you're single and you're like, man, I just wish, I just wish, man, I, mean, I just wish, like, why do I have to be here? Why can't I meet a guy? Why can't I have the ring? Why can't, like, just thinking all to yourself and just, like, wallowing in it and worrying. I encourage you to take it to the Lord. Tell him what's on your heart. The Lord says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer and petition, present your request before him. And the God of, and with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to him. And the God of peace, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds with that peace in Christ Jesus. It's so powerful. The Lord loves you and he cares about you. And so I encourage you, instead of just thinking on all of those desires on your own, take them to the Lord. Tell the Lord what's on your heart. Ask him the questions that you have. So as I said, those desires are not bad. But this is where it goes wrong, okay? This is where it goes askew. It goes askew whenever this desire for a relationship, this desire to be married, this desire for your relationship status to change begins to drive your life and begins to drive the reason you make your decisions. That's when it goes wrong because we were made to live in such a way that our love for God and our fear and reverence of Him, our obedience to Him and our desire to know Him, to walk in close fellowship with Him, to bring glory to His name, that, that desire, when our love for Him, when that desire is driving our decision making, like we, we are setting ourselves up for success, not saying that we're gonna get everything that we want, but saying that we are walking down a path that brings glory to the name of God and we are walking down a path that is the best path we could ever walk down. Versus whenever we are making decisions that are driven by our, by our own desires and our own wants, in this case, to be married and to be in a relationship, we end up setting ourselves up to settle. We set ourselves up to get what is less than our best because 
we made decisions based on what we thought was best for us, based on what we wanted in the here and in the now, rather than trusting God, submitting to him, and letting his good spirit lead us on level ground. Marriage is a gift, but when our desire for marriage drives our decisions, we, we totally have forgotten the whole purpose of marriage, and that is to bring glory to God. And just as marriage is a gift, singleness is also a gift. And before I go into this next point about how singleness is a gift, I want to encourage you that God doesn't settle on you. So you shouldn't settle on yourself. The Lord is your shepherd. You lack no good thing in him. He literally gives you everything that you need and every good and perfect gift comes from him. He's a good father who loves you, who cares about you. And so even whenever you're in a space where, in this case, you're single and in the moment you really don't want to be and you really wish that you had a boyfriend, you really wish that you had the ring, you really wish that you could say, I do. Like, it's maybe frustrating. You may have doubts and fears that those desires will never come to fruition. You may, like, there are so many things that could weigh you down in those moments. And out of that, sometimes we make decisions to satisfy those desires and we end up settling. Whereas what if we were to, even in the midst of those very real feelings, those very real oh, questions and doubts, what, would, what if we were to take them to God? The God who we love, the God who is trustworthy, and we were to submit them to him and say, God, I'm frustrated. I need help navigating this because I'm in a space I don't really wanna be, but I'm here. But I choose to trust you with all my heart, not lean on my own understanding because my own understanding is only bringing me anxiety and I know it's going to lead me to settle on myself, to settle on your best for my life. So I acknowledge you. I submit to you, oh God, knowing that you are making my path straight. And whatever my life looks like, whatever tomorrow holds, whatever seasons I come into and whatever seasons I don't, I don't ever walk in, I trust that it was your best for me because you're guiding me along the right path for the honor of your name. Whew, that's powerful. As I was saying earlier, singleness is also a gift just as marriage is. If you read in 1 Corinthians 7, you see Paul talking about like the sweetness of singleness and the gift that it is. And I want to read this quote to you by Ryan Griffith. He um, was a guest author on the Desiring God blog. And it was literally a whole blog about singleness. And this was a quote from the blog. He said, singleness, even for those who long to be married and aren't, is not a trial to be endured, which I, as I said earlier, I really believe that we see it as that. We don't see singleness as a gift. We see it as a season we just got to push through. But he says it's not a trial to be endured. It is actually a positive good. It is a gift, listen to this, it is a gift to be cherished and maximized. We ought not to waste our singleness by viewing it as a trial to be endured. Isn't that so good? So I wanna encourage you that you were made for such a time as this and God has not forgotten you. He's got you in this season. I'm going to bring out some poetry here in this season for a reason. He's not accidental in placing you where you currently are. And I love this out of Psalm 16. He's placed your boundary lines in pleasant places. There's purpose in where you currently stand in the season you're currently in. So I encourage you to seek God first and be present. Because going back to our first main questions, your purpose, your worth, your confidence is not found in a guy liking you. It's not found in that sweet romance. It's not found in the marriage status. But it is found in Christ and in Christ alone. It is Christ who can bring contentment that has longevity, not a certain season or a new relationship status. And I, I wanted to encourage you to, 
be careful to not let comparison convince you that you're not where you're supposed to be. Because it's really easy to scroll through social media and see marriage photos and get FaceTime calls from your best friends and hear the news that they got engaged and you're seeing the ring and so many other scenarios where we come face to face with a reality that people we know are in seasons that we wish we were in. Feels like they're getting to experience what we've been longing for and still haven't experienced. And that's a dangerous comparison wheel to go down because when we go down that comparison wheel, we begin to let ourselves be convinced that we aren't where we're supposed to be. And then out of that feeling like we're not where we're supposed to be, we then go back to letting that desire for a relationship drive our decision making instead of our trust in God and our love for God driving our decision making. So I want to caution you. Ask the Lord to give you a heart of celebration. Cry out before the Lord whenever your heart is sorrowful and you aren't experiencing what you so wish you were. Cast your cares upon him for he cares for you. But don't stay there. Don't stay in this place of sorrow because you're seeing other people experience what you wish you had. Rejoice in God. Rejoice in God and trust that Because they're in a certain place, it doesn't mean you're in the wrong place. Praise God that he has their boundary lines in that space. Praise God that he has put them there. But don't let that, don't let that water down where you currently are. I really hope that encourages you. Celebrate where the Lord has other people and also celebrate where the Lord has you, knowing that he's a good God who's trustworthy and where he has placed you, it's purposeful. I, I've i been single and I have dated and I have been engaged and I am now married and I can confidently say that it was not when I, when I got a boyfriend that I realized oh, now I have purpose because there's a guy who likes me. It was not whenever Josh got down on one knee that I then became content. It was not when we said I do that I then felt loved and worth it. It was not when we were married in college that I felt like, oh, now I have confidence. No, I have tasted and seen that the Lord is good and that it didn't matter what season I went through, singleness, dating, engagement, or marriage. Through every single season, I have tasted and seen that it is in Christ and in Christ alone that I am content, that I can have confidence that lasts. And you know what's so cool to me too is that Regardless of what your your season is, your purpose doesn't change. So it's not like you then have a more significant purpose once you get married or once you get in a relationship. Your significant purpose is all of your life, and that is to love God and love people as you love yourself, bringing glory to God and walking in close fellowship with Him. Yes, in different seasons, those, the responsibilities and the means by which you live out that person will look unique. As a wife, my like the means by which I live out my purpose day to day, it looks unique, but the heart posture is still the same. It's still a heart posture of in view of God's mercy, I offer my body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God not conforming to the pattern of this world, but being transformed by the renewing of my mind so I may test and approve God's good, pleasing, and perfect will for my life. Asking God to teach me to do His will and may His good spirit lead me on level ground for the honor of His name. That's my heart posture, even though I'm in a different setting, even though I have a different relationship status, even though I have different responsibilities, I'm in a different season. And it's same for singleness. You have different responsibilities. You have different opportunities. I encourage you to maximize it because wherever the Lord places you, it is for the glory of his name. It is to love him and it is to love others. It is to invest into relationships. It is to be purified. And as he works in you, you will and act according to his good purpose. 
Let your love for God drive your decision making. And if a person comes along who you get to marry and do that alongside, praise God. But if you're single for the rest of your life, praise God. Why? Because you're here for the glory of God. And whatever season he places you in, you know that that's why he placed you there. Yes, there are unique gifts and sweet reasons why the Lord brings you to places and it's to reveal who he is to you and to he's just so good and he's so personal and he's so specific but know that the foundational core that's why we started our main questions off here your purpose is to bring glory to god your worth is found in the one who made you your confidence is found in the god who is with you and those things are steadfast and unchanging no matter what status you walk in, no matter what season you walk through. I hope you're so encouraged. I hope that you're encouraged to know that your desire is, is valid. You're not wrong for that desire. I hope you're encouraged to take it to God. I hope you're encouraged to be honest about it with Him to talk about it with him. I hope that you're also encouraged to know that like, I hope you're like, you're warned in an encouraging way that it is a danger zone to let that desire drive your life. But submit that desire to the Lord and let the lo your love for God drive your life. I hope you're encouraged to know that contentment is found in Christ, not in a new circumstance, not in a new relationship status. I hope that you're encouraged and challenged to not go down the comparison trail where you begin to let yourself be convinced that you're not where you're supposed to be because you're not where she is. I hope that you're encouraged to know that marriage is a gift and singleness is a gift and you are loved by a good father who gives good and perfect gifts He's put your boundary lines in pleasant places. He's not forgotten you, and he is purposeful in where he has you. You are so loved, and I hope you know that. I hope you know that deeply. Guys, if you haven't, be sure and subscribe. Give a thumbs up. Comment down below what you took away, what topics you'd like to talk about moving forward, and um, yeah, just know that your purpose, your worth, and your confidence doesn't change with your seasons, but it remains steadfast because the God who you find all of those things in is steadfast. I love you.